Welcome to Organizing Your Research with the Common Quandaries Workshop Series at the Research Commons of the University Libraries of the University of Maryland, College Park. Wow, what a mouthful. Maybe we should consider organizing that description better. In other words, this is the video companion to the Common Quandaries Workshop where graduate students talk to other graduate students about some of the best strategies and tools they've discovered in their studies. I'm Nick Slaughter, a recent PhD graduate from the English Department at UMD, and I'm a GA in the Research Commons for Spring and Summer 2017. My name is Hong Lei. I am a PhD student in the International Education Policy Program. This video and the workshop it's based on all come from the University Library's Research Commons, where we offer a number of services, spaces, workshops, and other events to bring together graduate and faculty researchers across campus and help enhance your work. To learn more about what we do and to find other video or text resources like this one, check out this link or the many others in this video description. As you can see on our homepage here, you can find your subject specialist librarian, see the kind of spaces that are available to graduate researchers, check out our events that include speaker series and a variety of workshops, and the other free services offered by the Research Commons like statistical consulting and GIS resources. More specifically, this content has been developed as part of the Research Commons Common Quandaries workshop series for grad students. In these workshops, we offer introductions to a variety of skills, tools, and concepts like those found in this video to researchers on campus. We work to put on a robust schedule of CQ events every semester, so be sure to check out our upcoming schedule on our website and past events in the links available to you below in the video description. All right, we've got that out of the way, and you know who we are and what we do. Now let's get to organizing your research. In this video, we are introducing you to some strategies and software that might help you stay organized as you start your graduate student career or as you start a new research project. Or if you want to make your workflow more efficient and your organization more reliable in general. Hopefully you'll find some ideas here to help. Here's what you'll find in this video. First, we want to demonstrate what software like citation managers can do for you. To do this, Hong is going to spotlight the free program Mendeley, showing you some of its most useful functionality. Next, I'll talk through some general best practices for keeping yourself organized with or without tools like citation managers. And finally, we're going to stress the importance of keeping backups of your files. Spoiler alert, we're going to recommend cloud syncing services like Box and Google Drive, both of which you have special access to as UMD students. And here are the main goals for what we're covering in this video. That's right, you guessed it. Number one, learn how citation managers and storage tools work. And number two, consider some recommended best practices for managing your research and scholarship. It should go without saying, but we're here saying it to you. You should definitely be thinking about these issues no matter what programs you choose to use or not use. With all this in mind, I'll let Hong take it away and tell you about some of the features of Mendeley and citation managers in general. So first of all, let me demonstrate to you why I decided to use a citation manager in the first place. Say, I'm writing a paper. This is the first sentence, for example. And now I want to cite an author. What I can do is go up to the References tab here, click Insert Citation in the Mendeley Cytomatic box, type in the name of the author that I want to cite, for example, Trumpus. And then once I click OK, the reference will be automatically added to my sentence. Now I can repeat the same process with um, the rest of my paper. So for example, this is the second sentence. And once again, I can go back up to um, the references tab, click insert citation, um, type in the name of the author that I want. Click the reference that I want, click OK. And then once again, the citation is added to my sentence. Now, you might wonder why you need to go through this whole process when you can just type out the citation yourself. Well, the real magic of citation managers happen when it's time to create the references list. Instead of having to spend an hour typing out and formatting my references list, I can just click one button up here the insert bibliography button and boom all of my references will automatically appear in the correct format next section now to set up all of this magic 
you need to build your own collection of references in the citation manager in the first place. As you can see here, this is the main interface of Mendeley Desktop, which is the citation manager that we will be spotlighting today. In the middle here, this is where all of your references are saved, and you can scroll through to see um, the different references that you have in your collection. On the left-hand side over here is where you can see um, your collection of folders that you can create for different projects that you have. This is very useful for you to organize um, all of the references that you have because you can basically just drag and drop a citation to the folder or the project that you are working on like this. And then it will um, be added to this particular project. On the right hand side here, you can find all the details attached to each reference. So from the type of the reference itself, whether it's a journal article or a book or a book section, um, you can also find the title of the reference, the author's journal, um, abstract and tags and keywords, which you can always add in yourself by just clicking on the field and then type in whatever you want. So how do you add things into Mendeley? The easiest way that I found is basically just dragging and dropping PDF files into the Mendeley interface itself. So to demonstrate this, let me minimize this window and go to a PDF file that I want to add to Mendeley, which I have in my downloads folder. So say I want to add this redefining rural reality so say I want to add this redefining rurality article to Mendeley. What I can do is basically just dragging this article into Mendeley. And as you can see, a copy um, ghosting of the image will show up. And once you release the mouse, the article will be automatically added to Mendeley itself. As you can see, Mendeley has this function where the software can pull the citation materials from the PDF file itself so that you don't really have to type out the title of the article or the author or the journal. Um, all of that inf information will, all of that information will be added into Mendeley automatically. Now this is still a free software so it doesn't work correctly a hundred percent all the time. So my advice to you would be to always, always go back and double check the information that Mendeley is pulling from your reference file. Another way to add stuff to Mendeley is through the browser add-on. This is really useful for when you are browsing on a certain database and you want to quickly save um, references to your Mendeley collection. So for example, here I am on Google Scholar and let me search for a topic. In girls' education in developing countries. Now, once I have my list of references, I think this third one looks interesting. So what I can do is to click on the Mendeley button here. And then the list of all the references that Google Scholar has found for me will pop up in this new window. And because I want to save only the third article that show up, I can just check this checkbox here and then click Save. And then what happens is that this article will be saved to my Mendeley collection. And if I go back to Mendeley, it should be reflected. So with books and book chapters and other materials that are not in a digital format, I can always do a manual insert in Mendeley itself. So if you go to the drop down arrow button right here next to the add icon, if you click that, you can click this fourth option here, which is add entry manually. And then you can basically just fill out the different um, fields of information yourself.
what I personally do is to set up what is called a watch folder on my downloads folder, which means that anytime I add a PDF file to this particular folder, the file will be added to my Mendeley collection itself, even if the software itself is not open. For example, I will be copying this PDF file to this Mendeley folder. And as you can see, back in Mendeley, this file has been automatically added to my collection. And again, um, the software has automatically pulled information from the article itself. In order to set this up, you can go into Tools, Options, Watch Folders, and then find the folder that you want to set up as your watch folder. So for example, for me, it would be the to be added to Mendeley folder inside my downloads. And then once you click OK, this setting will be um, all set to go. I really prefer this option because it means that I don't have to have Mendeley's software open all the time, but I can still make sure that my files will be imported to my collection. Another neat function that Mendeley has is that it can automatically rename PDF files in your computer itself. You know how sometimes you download a PDF file and it's named 019dfkl%.pdf? Well, that's not helpful at all. With Mendeley, I can set it up so that each file I import will be automatically saved to one folder and renamed into an author year title convention. Let me show you how to set it up. If you go into Tools, Options, File Organizer, you can check this um, first section right here, which is Organize My Files, and set it up so that all of your files will be um, saved into one folder. And then if you want to sort these files into multiple subfolders within the big mega folder, you can check this box here. And then finally, you can also check here to make Mendeley automatically rename your document files into an author year and title format. So let me show what my Mendeley folder looks like. And here is my collection which are the physical files on my desktop itself. And as you, as you can see, all of the files are named in the same format of um, titling, which is author, year, and then title of the reference. This is really useful because if I want to email a file to a friend or my advisor, for example, I can just open up this folder and easily scroll through all of the files to find the one that I want. So. I personally prefer Mendeley over other citation managers, mainly because Mendeley has really powerful PDF reading and annotating capability. If I double click on a PDF, a new tab will open up with a full PDF file itself. And basically, I can read through this and make notes like in any other PDF reader software. Up at, up at the top, as you can see here, are the different tools that you can have such as um, making a new sticky note, highlighting certain part, such as this, changing the color of the highlight itself. And you can also zoom and turn it into full screen, like other PDF readers. Another function that Mendeley has to help you with reading PDF files itself is the Notes tab over here on the right. So if you click it, you will see that there is a section for general notes and also private notations, which are notes that are um, attached to specific pages in your PDF file. The neat thing about this note space is that even when you don't have the PDF file open, you can still open this notes tab as you scroll, scroll through the different PDF files that you have. Let me show you an example of a file that I have with the attached notes. 
So for example, in this case, even though I don't have the PDF file attached, I still have my notes. And if I scroll to that, I still have a pretty good idea of what this reference is about. Now, the last thing that I will demonstrate from Mendeley is the group function. Groups allow members to easily share references within a group. And you can find the groups here. For example, if I add a new article to the group, my fellow members will receive that reference automatically. And there are two types of groups in Mendeley, private groups and public groups. In a private group, the full PDF file will be shared among the members, but in a public group, only the reference details will be shared, and your colleagues will have to search for the PDF themselves. With a free version of Mendeley, everyone can create one private group and then unlimited open public groups. So Hong has highlighted much of what a program like Mendeley can do. Other citation managers like Zotero or EndNote have similar basic functions. To decide whether or not to use a citation manager, or which one to choose, we have this graphic here and you can check out our other resources in the video description below. Some things to consider are, which application seems to work best for you and your workflow? What are your peers using? What are the faculty in your program or people in your wider field using? This might have an impact on your decision. And of course, make sure you're using a program that works effectively on your computers. Whether or not you choose to use a citation manager or other software tools, you should take some time to consider the effectiveness of your own organization. Where can you improve? How might changes to your organization address some of the challenges you're encountering as a graduate student? I'll share with you some strategies I use and why I use them. When I began my graduate career, I was using an old buggy laptop that did not want to work effectively with Zotero the only citation manager I knew about at the time. I didn't want to put in the effort to figure out how to make it work, so I came up with my own strategies. Your first step is organizing your file folders. Give your folders meaningful and consistent names, and be sure to keep files for different coursework and projects separate. You don't want to waste time trying to figure out which files are actually relevant to the task you're trying to work on right now. Figuring out your personal folder structure is something you'll have to do even if you start using a citation manager. Here's an example of some of my own folder structure. I keep all the stuff I've done for classes in a folder for each degree I've earned, and of course each class has its own folder that's clearly labeled. But even as I look at this, I realize I could have even better, slightly better organization here if I just add a name along with a course number since it has been a while since my MA program. And who knows if I'll remember which course number was which down the line. But there's a good chance I might want to look up the reading or writing I did at the time. Why not go ahead and get ourselves better organized for the future? You should make sure all of your files are named so that you know what each file is and generally what it's about. This is especially important for your growing collection of articles that you've downloaded in PDF format. Likely a lot of items you've downloaded through library databases have inexplicable file names that need to be changed if you're going to know what each file contains without opening all of them every time. Here's an example where the default name is Content Server not something that will help me navigate through my PDF library later. Again, consistency is the key here. The information I recommend including in your file names is the name of authors and title of articles. Sometimes article titles aren't entirely informative, so you might also include a note on an article's topic in the file name, or better yet, create another subfolder if you're collecting articles on a number of different subtopics. Along with giving good names to your folders and files, you should consider keeping a running bibliography for any project you're working on. A citation manager will help you do this more automatically, but it's always important to keep track of the data and text you've either consulted or are immediately relevant to your research. I recommend entering bibliographic information right away, wherever you're keeping it, as soon as you start looking at a source. At the very least, you always need to be sure to capture all the possible relevant information about a source somewhere. PDFs from licensed library databases are usually very good about including basic, traditional bibliographic information like publication dates, page numbers, etc., as well as information like date of access and permanent URLs. But you shouldn't take this for granted, especially as different style guides keep evolving with the changing nature of information systems, publication, 
databases, and our own research. You, not some database, are ultimately responsible for making sure that you have all the right bibliographic information available to you. Enter information into your citation manager, put it all in your own bibliography, or make sure it's saved in your PDF files themselves. This becomes more important if in your research you find yourself using a lot of print texts, meaning physical books from the libraries or other sources. If you're scanning chapters, it's always important to also scan the title page and copyright page so that you have the bibliographic information at your fingertips without needing to find the physical copy again. Another aspect of organization that I wanted to touch upon is saving drafts of your writing. There's the temptation to take the easy route and label your essays and other writing assignments for your graduate coursework without much thought. But, especially if you're in a writing intensive discipline, keeping your own writing organized well will serve you down the road. I recommend saving all major drafts of your writing. If you wrote a page or more but decided to junk it, keep it safe somewhere with an informative title. Some writers will even recommend that you keep a junk file for any writing project because you'll never quite be able to predict when your old drafts might prove useful. While something you wrote for one project just might not work, perhaps the material can be used in related projects, or even in an introduction, cover letter, grant letter, or more. In the same vein, you want to keep different drafts of your projects so you can keep track of your changes over time, and so you know which versions you've given to advisors, reviewers, or other readers. So those are some of the things to reconsider in your own research workflow if you haven't already perfected your personal strategies. In the final stretch here, I'm going to point you to some useful tools for storage and cloud syncing. No matter how you approach storing your files, you'll always want to ensure their security and accessibility. Cloud syncing through services like Box or Google Drive satisfy these needs. If your computer gets fried or stolen, you will be able to download all your files stored in the cloud to a new machine with no problem. Box and Drive also have collaboration features where you and partners can work with the same files without having to email different versions back and forth. And both Drive and Box allow you to access your synced folders from web browsers anywhere in the world with an internet connection. While you're at the University of Maryland, you also get added benefits for using Box and Google Drive. If you're using your UMD credentials to log into Box, you receive 50 gigabytes of storage for free compared to 10 gigabytes for a regular free account. Google Drive, however, claims to offer unlimited storage to university accounts. I found Box worked better for me in the projects I was involved with when I first started using cloud syncing programs. And just like with a variety of citation managers out there, you should choose the one that works best for you and your devices. You can find links and more information in this video's description, but let me show you how the Box Sync app works for me to give you an idea of how cloud apps work generally. When my computer starts up, Box is already running. You can see the blue icon in the bottom right system tray on this screen. Box creates a master folder, and to sync files and folders, all you have to do is place files inside the Box folder. Once inside and synced, these blue check marks will appear on the file icons for the files that are synced to the Box cloud. I'll change a file name so you can see what happens when Box needs to update a file. Whenever a file is updated, Box will sync it as soon as you have an internet connection, and the new version is now available on any of your devices with Box as well as through your internet browser. Here's how you log into the web browser interface. The easiest way to find the login page is to search for UMD Box and then to bookmark the page. You enter your UMD credentials and you're brought to your Box page. Everything that's available on my laptop or desktop computers is available here and I also have a number of other options. You can add new files or folders manually. In this drop down menu you have additional options like downloading but you can also share files through Box. Google Drive and most other cloud syncing services offer this feature too. Another great feature here is the ability to track versions of files to see how many times this particular file has been updated on Box while also giving you the option to restore a previous version if you've made a mistake or had some kind of glitch with your file systems. So that's what we have for you in this video about organizing your research. If you have more questions, please feel free to contact us at our Research Commons email address. And if you want to hear more about citation managers and other tools, come check out our live Common Quandaries workshops and other events on our website. Thank you.